Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for our math lesson today. So these past couple of weeks we have been learning all about word problems and today we are going to start to learn about another kind of word problem. So I want you to look and listen closely. I am going to be showing you a slideshow like this. You're going to be able to see me down here in the corner. I'm going to be talking with you and guiding you through this slideshow to teach you a little bit more about these new word problems. So these new word problems we're going to be learning about are called change unknown word problems. So you see all these question marks because they're called change unknown word problems. The change is unknown. We don't know what it is. So let's start. What is a change unknown problem? So a change unknown word problem is a word problem that gives a starting point and an ending point. So you know where you start in the problem and you know where you end. But there is a change that happens in the middle of the problem. But I put a question mark because we don't know what the change is. So we know what we start with and we know what we finish with. But in the middle of the problem, a change happens. And we don't know what that change is. So these can be kind of tricky. I need you to make sure you pay close attention. I'm going to show you an example of a change unknown word problem. So first I'm just going to read the problem and I want you to listen close. Sarah has three crayons. She gets some more crayons from Bill. Now she has five crayons. How many crayons did Sarah get from Bill? Hmm. That's kind of a lot. So whenever you see a change unknown word problem, first thing I want you to do, or like we do with every word problem, is we make a number sentence. So what we're going to do is try to create a number sentence. In order to do this, we want to go ahead and read our problem very slowly. So let's look at the first sentence. We're going to go through it piece by piece. Sarah has three crayons. How many crayons does Sarah have? Three. So we know that Sarah has three crayons. And that's the first part of our number sentence. That's what we start with. Let's take a look at the next part. She gets some more crayons from Bill. Now I underlined some more because that's very important. We want to ask ourselves, in this problem, are we adding or are we subtracting? So if Sarah gets some more crayons from Bill, are we adding crayons or are we taking away? That's right, we're adding crayons. So if we're adding crayons, do we need a plus or a minus in our number sentence? That's right, a plus. There's our plus sign. So now she has five crayons. So we know at the end she has five crayons, but did they tell us how many more crayons that Bill gave her? All they said was she gets some more crayons from Bill. Did they tell us how many crayons she got from Bill? No, they did not. So I put a question mark there because we don't know how many crayons that Bill gave her. And then now she has five crayons. So we know at the end, Sarah has five crayons. And then it asks us how many crayons did Sarah get from Bill? So that is our change that happened, our change unknown that we need to find out. How many crayons did Sarah get from Bill? Our question mark right here. So I'm going to show you how we can solve that. So I'm going to come back to my big screen here and you are going to see something that we are familiar with up here on my board. So who remembers what this is called? A number bond. Good job. So in our number bond, the big circle always represents the biggest number, or what we call a whole. And the small parts always are for the smaller numbers that are put together to make the whole. So let's go ahead and fill out this number bond to help us solve our problem, solve for our change unknown. And what we're trying to find is how many crayons that Bill gave to Sarah. So our whole, or our biggest number that we know, is five. Because at the end, Sarah had five crayons. 
And we know how many crayons Sarah started out with, which is one of our parts. Sarah started with how many crayons? Three crayons. Now what we don't know is how many crayons that Bill gave her to make five. So this is where I'm gonna put my question mark. We don't know how many crayons that Bill gave her to make five. So this is how we find out. We wanna solve for this missing part. So how you can do that is we're gonna start with our whole, which is five, and we are going to take away three. Because if we take away three, it's going to give us the missing part. Because three and this part, when they come together, make our whole. So let me show you how that works. Five, our whole, so we always start with our biggest number, minus the part that we know, which is three. Minus three, because we're gonna take away three. Taking away three from the whole. And then, we wanna find out our answer, our other part. This is our other part that we don't know. Five minus three equals blank. That's what we're solving for. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve that problem, five minus three. So I'm gonna do that by drawing a quick picture. One, two, three, four, five. I drew five circles. How many am I taking away? Three. So I'm gonna X out three. One, two, three. And now I wanna know how many circles are left over. How many circles do I have left over after I took away three? That's right, two. Did we find our missing part? Yes, we did. So I'm gonna erase our question mark. Our missing part is two. So three and two make our whole of five. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Three and two make five. Good job. Let's see. I'm gonna make myself small again. Three plus two equals five. Good job, so that was an example of one change unknown problem. Let's go ahead and try another one. So, first I'm going to read it to you and I want you to listen closely. Eight dogs were sitting on the grass. Some of the dogs went home. Then there were four dogs sitting on the grass. How many dogs went home? Hmm, that's a lot of words. So what we're gonna do, like when we always wanna solve a word problem, is we're gonna start by writing a number sentence. So let's go through each part of the problem and make our number sentence. So there were eight dogs sitting on the grass. How many dogs were sitting on the grass? Eight, good. Eight dogs sitting on the grass. Some of the dogs went home. Now I underline went home because that's a very important part of this problem. If some of the dogs went home, are we adding more dogs or are we taking away? We're taking away because some of those dogs went home. They're not there anymore. So if we're taking away, are we gonna be doing addition or subtraction? That's right, we're gonna be doing subtraction. And because subtraction means taking away. And when we use subtraction in a number sentence, we need a minus sign. Good job. So, so far we have eight minus blank. How many of the dogs went home? Some of the dogs went home. How many dogs went home? Some. So we don't know how many. So that's where we're going to put our question mark. That's our change unknown. We don't know how many dogs went home. Let's listen to the next sentence. Then there were four dogs sitting on the grass. So then we know there were four dogs left sitting on the grass after some of them went home. Now they're asking us how many dogs went home. That's our change unknown. That's what we need to solve or find out. How many dogs went home? We gotta fill in this missing piece of our number sentence. So we are going to use our handy dandy number bond again. Let me just clear it up. 
erase these parts. All right, we're good to go. Now, remember, make myself big again. Here I am. So when we're filling out our number bond, our hole is always what? Our biggest number. So what is our biggest number in this number sentence? Eight. Eight is our hole or our biggest number. Okay. And what part do we know? So we know they started with eight dogs. Then some of the dogs went home. That's our change unknown. How many dogs were left sitting on the grass? Four. That's right. So we know one of our parts is four. Do that a little bigger so you can see. Four. All right. So we're trying to solve for this part. We don't know this part. Four and blank make eight. We need to find what part goes with four to make our whole of eight. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to solve our problem by making a number sentence and we're going to take away part from the whole to solve for our missing part. So when we're doing this, you always start with the whole, the biggest number, and that is eight. So I'm going to write eight. And then we're taking away four because we're taking away that part to find the missing part. Taking away the part we know, which is four, to solve for that missing part. This is how we find out that missing part. So we need to solve the problem eight minus four. So ask yourself, think about your subtraction strategies. What can we do? I'm going to draw a picture again because I think that's easy for you to see. I'm going to go through, I'm going to make eight circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight circles. How many am I taking away? Four, because that's the part we know. So I'm going to cross out, using my draw and cross out strategy, cross out four. One, two, three, four. I crossed out four circles. So now I want to count and see how many I have left over to get my answer or my missing part. Let's count. Ready? One, two, three, four. So my answer or my missing part is four. So I'm going to erase my question mark. And I am going to write four. So now our number bond is complete. They say four and four make eight. When we put four and four together, it makes eight. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Now let's pull up our problem. Make myself small again. Eight minus four equals four. Great job. I'm going to come up again. All right, so I know these are a little tricky. So whenever you're doing change unknown problems, I need you to make sure that you listen close and you focus. So your first step when solving change unknown problems is you're going to read the problem and listen. Read or listen. Then what you want to do is you want to make a number sentence and find out the unknown change. So we want to find out what we're trying to solve. Like in that last problem, we were trying to find out how many dogs left the grass? How many dogs went home? So I want you, after you make your number sentence and you find out the parts that you do know, to make a number bond. Your number bond is going to show you your whole and what part you need to take away. Then after you make your number bond, you're going to take away the part that you do know from the whole. That's how we got 8 minus 4. Then you're going to solve that subtraction problem using all of your subtraction strategies that you already know. I chose to use the draw and cross out strategy. You can use whatever works best for you. Then we use that strategy to get our answer. That was four. And now we know four and four come together to get our whole of eight. Then we can take that answer and put it in our problem just like we did here. 